Why does genre matter? 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 This is the 10th installment of the 90 Day Marathon for Changelings vlog marathon in the run-up to crowdfunding beginning April 21st. So I have sort of two small stories to relate regarding uh, Changelings and why genre matters. And they're interrelated, but this, the first story goes something like this. I was at my friend's house, we were talking about Changelings. He asked me a very pointed question after I described the monster that's in it, how it's about the tear that's coming to Earth and it's gonna change everything, and how you know it's inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing and vampires. And he asked me very pointedly, uh, why, why this direction in the film? It's so genre. It's so very much a horror movie when a lot of the other stuff that I've written is typically very much it's not genre. It's uh, or it's too dramatic or it's uh, it's experimental or it's too quirky comedy or it's a YouTube thing. Uh, and so with this, he was kind of surprised that I had chosen something so specific. And my answer was quite simply like when he was like, so when he asked, why, so why choose such a genre piece? I could only answer honestly, and the answer was marketability. I've written a lot of scripts. Uh, none have come closer to being made than my horror film, Thunder Snow, which I'd written about 12 years ago now. It uh, had a million dollars sort of softly attached to it. I'd met with the distribution company. Uh, that deal ended up falling through, and I had the script option a few more times because it just... It sort of tickled all the, the right bones of someone who's a fan of horror. But I never really wanted to make a horror movie. I sort of wrote Thunder Snow as a fluke. I didn't take horror as seriously as I do now. Even though I was a big fan of it, I kind of poo-pooed the idea of making it because I was very resistant to thinking about or playing inside of a genre. Upon reflecting over the course of my uh, writing, I don't want to say career because I really haven't been writing screenplays for a career. It's been more of a hobby. I write them and try to get them made or try to get them sold. And it's, you know, I've, I've been successful a couple of times, just not, not in large amounts. So I had attempted to avoid pigeonholing myself. I'd, I was always really afraid of that. But uh, I think that that was a terrible mistake. And I probably should have been playing in genre for a lot longer or just really embrace the idea of genre and given in to the idea that, you know, horror is okay. And I think that a lot of my feeling about horror and sci-fi and sort of not really pursuing them and wanting to choose, say, comedy or drama was because of the second story that I'm going to tell you. And the second story is that one night I went out to a meeting with a producer and uh, she was very gung-ho about meeting up and she wanted to know about everything that I was you know, doing, what was going on. And we sat down for drinks and the first question out of her mouth was, what genre do you want to work in? And I said, sci-fi, that and horror and um, everything else kind of is secondary to those couple of, those couple of genres, uh, although I do like a good noir crime thriller. And then the expression she gave, I, I swear to God, she literally went, ooh, mm, like, oh God, get the stink away from me. It was, it was really, it was a little painful actually, because you'd think that, because we were also friends and you would think that as a friend, there might've been a little bit of encouragement going on, but what had happened in her brain was a calculation. Where could I put Phil? as a producer, because she's a producer and she was making stuff. And I think she literally, that's what she was thinking when we met up was less friend, more cog in the wheel. Where can we fit Phil? And when I chose the genre of sci-fi, it was an instant no, it was an instant turnoff. I did not fit inside the wheelhouse of this producer's uh, material. And that sucks, because I would have liked to have worked with her. I would have loved to have made a feature or a TV pilot or something, but it didn't work out. But that's probably a good thing, because in the end, we would not have been on the same page. So genre matters a lot. So that experience with this producer had made me feel a little bit like sci-fi horror. Maybe I, maybe I was right in not pursuing those things all along. And I, and I, I kind of listened to that really negative voice in, in the back of my head that said, oh, you, if you do these, you know, it's, if you do horror or if you do, you focus too much on sci-fi, you're gonna be looked at as the horror sci-fi guy. And in the end, you know, reflecting on it, that would have been fine. I think that would have been great. But I don't know, something really held me back. And I think part of it was that meeting. I, I, th I think I felt that I maybe had listened too much to her opinion about sci-fi. And 
the more I became comfortable with myself, the more I, I, I sort of gravitated back to the reason why I started making movies to begin with, which was these movies that I loved as a kid. Star Wars, The Thing, Predator, uh, They Live, Critters. I mean, you name it. Any of these old 80s and 90s movies, that's the reason why I got into making movies. And I, I felt like a lot of people around me were very much poo-pooing it. And I, I think I absorbed that. And I think I was also listening to the negative part of myself, like, oh, I shouldn't do that, or I'll get stuck doing that, or it's not respectable. Very discouraging uh, time. Um, but now, with Changelings, I'm fully embracing this idea that it's going to be a sci-fi horror thriller, and I'm excited about that, and there's nothing to be ashamed about that. I think that that feeling a little nervous about or not being, I feel like not being able to admit that I really enjoyed those genres really held me back. So genre matters a lot. One, it allows you to think about your film as a product and where it fits in a marketplace. Even if you're going to go against convention, you could say very clearly it's an X genre and people understand it because genres come with certain tropes. So when you say a genre, it communicates a whole range of ideas to people. It's shorthand. I think that's the best part about fitting your film into a genre. It's a powerful shorthand. If I say sci-fi, there's a good chance there's aliens and, and spaceships and outer space and mutating bacteria that takes over your brain and causes you to turn into an alien, the greys, I mean, you name it. Uh, that could blend into the paranormal, just like how it can blend, in, blend into horror. Once you cement your piece in a genre, it allows you to experiment within a certain wheelhouse so you get creative restraints. That's the other thing. When you say it's an X genre, you, you are giving yourself creative restraints, and that is really helpful for a filmmaker because it narrows down your choices to a, a, a specific range that if you, you, you know, if you play with it, you can play with it and you can say, well, it's sci-fi, but it's really kind of more horror or it's sci-fi, but it's really kind of more drama, like indie drama. But you can still cement it like the core of it is this idea and these ideas. And that's really helpful for communicating to other people when you're making your project, when you're pitching your project, when you're trying to get support for the project. It connects you to a community. That's really important especially with a horror and sci-fi, the communities are just, they're rabid. They love those genres and they're very defensive of them. Horror and sci-fi presented unique opportunities to genre bend and, and play, with, play with genres a lot more. And you can reinvent things and you can make things feel fresh quite often because it's, it's a genre that's, that, that experiences a lot of churn in movies. Not a lot of ideas. I think that horror lacks a lot of new ideas. I feel like when I've been watching a lot of horror, it's kind of been, it feels always, it's been feeling quite stale to me. I think Hereditary was the uh, the best horror movie that I've seen in a long time. Probably the best since The Ring. Um, <clears throat> it's just a really exceptional horror film. And it does it without a lot of gore. And it's it's got a lot of sophisticated visual communication happening in the film. It's just a really good movie. And I did not like The Witch. I don't care what anybody says, that movie is fucking garbage. But I like Hereditary. They did a great job with Hereditary. Those are some reasons why I think genre is really important. And because it's shorthand, the other reason why genre is important is because people don't have a lot of time when they're trying to decide things or when they actually sit down to watch things and they, they know what they like and to allow the customer to tell, you know, to make a decision for themselves of whether or not they want to consume that product. And putting it into a genre is really helpful. It really allows people to save a lot of time because it presents a very clear uh, hierarchical organization, right? It's like, it's, uh, it's sci-fi or it's horror. I, I don't like those two things. So I'm going to avoid them. I only like rom-com. So it's just really, it's very helpful for the consumer. And genre matters when you're trying to build teams. Do people understand what you're making? So if you go and you build a team that is comprised of nothing but people who do drama and it's a hardcore sci-fi, you're going to have a lot of trouble building the proper team. I think probably... Uh, philosophically, expertise-wise. You want to find people who are in the wheelhouse of sci-fi or in the wheelhouse of horror, who have experience, who understand the genre and understand the tropes that come with, with the genre, the pitfalls and the advantages that each genre comes with. It's just, you know, choosing a genre really helps uh, all aspects of not only making the film, but also in promoting the films. So I think that that, uh, I th I've learned that lesson and I think that when my friend had said to me, uh, you know, oh my God, it's such a genre piece, that I realized that for a long time, I'd been pitching ideas that probably he didn't think were very interesting because he couldn't, not that he couldn't understand them, he just didn't know where to, where to put them. He didn't know, like, oh, is, it a, is it a horror? Is it a sci-fi? Is it a drama? Is it a comedy? Like, what is it? And that's a problem. Uh, it doesn't mean that the scripts were bad. It doesn't mean that the ideas were bad. It just means that I wasn't, it, because they weren't genre-based, it was more difficult to communicate the idea. 
So the shorthand was missing. But when I pitch Changelings and I pitch it as a horror movie and I say it's a horror sci-fi or it's a horror thriller, people really, they get it. It allows people to build a framework really quickly and that is really helpful when making the film. And how that relates to Changelings, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of horror and sci-fi, but I know enough of it and I love enough of it to be able to give my own spin on it in an honest way, understanding a lot of the tropes and a lot of a lot of the conventions and pitfalls and advantages that the genres bring with them, and the fact that it just fascinates me. I think that that alone is a reason enough to pursue the genre. And I think that it, you know, knowing those genres allows me to bend it a little bit. It allows me to play on the margins of what the genre is to invent something new. I mean, I've gotten into arguments, really heated arguments, about whether or not John Carpenter's The Thing is a sci-fi or a horror movie. I would argue it's sci-fi, and because there is clearly an alien, and it's an alien ship that comes from outer space, but a lot of my friends just disagree. They just think it's hard horror movie. And I think that, I think that that's interesting. It, it allows you to capture two different demographics, two different kinds of people that overlap, that, but aren't necessarily the same. So it allows two different communities to come together and uh, participate in something that, you know, that I find exciting. So that's really cool about choosing the genre of sci-fi uh, horror. Is that, you know, they, they, they go so well together. I love that. It's like salt and caramel. It's like caramel and vanilla or glass and flesh. You know, tasty stuff. As we talk about the story more, you'll see more sci-fi elements and how those relate to the horror elements of it. And hopefully as the short film comes together and we complete this project, it'll, you know, it'll really communicate the kind of, the kind of world that I want to see, the, the sort of very heightened realism, but not, not extremely gory, more focused on making the environment feel lived in and realistic. I want it to feel like a, a world that, where everyone is out of their depth, that things are not, that even though the world is completely insane, everything feels and looks normal. There's a difference between watching a sci-fi movie that takes place in a harsh environment or in the woods versus, say, in a hyper-realistic simulation that we're all living in and we're all enslaved by these giant robots. I mean, obviously The Matrix is an amazing film, but it's so fantastic uh, that it has disadvantages despite how amazing it is. It doesn't feel like the real world. It doesn't feel like something that this could maybe be happening. Like that, that's the kind of feeling that I want to get with this sci-fi horror movie. I just, I want it to feel lived in. Um, and I want it to feel like a real place. I love Another Earth. That was a big, that's another big inspiration. I love Upstream Color. I like how they feel like they're, they just sort of exist in the real world, even though what's going on is completely insane. I just love how we explore, we can explore time travel on a micro budget like Primer. Uh, those are the movies that really inspire me. And I don't want this film to look like those movies per se, but I want it to have a flavor of that, but not exactly that. And I think that I, I like being able to say it's indie sci-fi horror. And now we, can, we, now we have a very clear idea of where we're going with this project. You know, I say those three words, indie sci-fi horror, and you just probably have an instant idea of like, what I'm talking about. And that's, that's why genre is so great. You know, you get it. You understand like, oh, these are the kind of movies he's going for. I like that, I'm into that, I'll support that. Or, nah, not for me. It cuts with a blade. And um, I think that that's really important when you're making your film. All right guys, have a great night, see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.